I just got to notice we're live. <clears throat> live, and uh, I'm going to wait just a second here because, of course, we've got to play the the beautiful, the wonderful. Uh-oh, and i got to turn off the uh, stream over here or we're going to hear, like, echoes, echoes, echoes. Uh, ba -bum, ba -bum. Let me start up the a video because, you know, it can't be an Apple World Today TV without having the uh, official intro. Cannot be. Ah, you muted. <laughs> yeah, I was saying something to my wife there. Oh, so, tell her hi. He said howdy. We got to watch the Apple event together for the first time ever. Nice. She gave a thumbs up. Is she running out to buy anything yet? <laughs> well, we're going to wait and see. I'll give my thoughts. I had to admit, I wasn't as wild as I have been sometimes. Well, I think, well, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and share a screen and we'll start up the uh, intro. So here we go. And hi, everybody. Uh, Steve Sandy here with uh, the the very brave Marty Edwards. Marty actually has pneumonia, but he uh, came to this. Unfortunately, uh, I and uh, we uh, extend our sympathies to uh, the family of uh, Dennis Sellers and, and his wife. His father-in-law uh, passed away this weekend, and they're uh, at a uh, uh, viewing uh, tonight. So he couldn't make it, uh, but I got to hand it to him for, uh, you know, just plugging through and uh, working uh, during the uh, event today as, you know, as had a situation as that was to do that. And you, Mr. Edwards, with pneumonia actually <laughs> getting on. Mm -hmm. So you're doing it from a, uh, what, a recliner? Well, I'm still in my office. I've uh, got the desk across the way in an office chair, but I thought since I wasn't going to do an uh, app demo tonight, I thought I was going to do it from the iPhone, sitting in a recliner where I'm a little bit more comfortable. I've never had pneumonia in my life. But I tell you what, it's thrown me for a loop. I don't think I've ever been sick, but I feel pretty good tonight. I was going to do all I can to uh, make this broadcast because I didn't want to miss it on such a special night. And I feel pretty good right now. Yeah, I tell you, pneumonia is not a lot of fun. I've had it three times in the last 10 years. And yet every time I go to my uh, primary care physician, she says, and I'll say, well, should I finally get one of the uh, pneumonia vaccines? And she goes, no. <laughs> so either she's trying to kill me off or <laughs> she doesn't think they do much good. I don't know. Well, I tell you, it gives me, uh, I can sympathize now with people who have it. It's not to be taken lightly. Mm. So, but I got yeah. up uh, this morning. I, I tried to get to feeling good. I wanted to watch the event, and I felt really good during the event. And uh, then I rested a while this afternoon and didn't think I would do very well. But I feel better right now than I have all day. So that's that's good. My voice will be a little rough. You might hear me cough a couple of times, but we'll we'll get through it. Well, maybe that's it. The Apple World uh, Today TV is uh, the best possible thing for uh, pneumonia. And I got to <laughs> say hello to Paul Gans, who made it through the uh, hurricane uh, with a minimum of damage. The Hurricane Irma guy, as I was going to type there in the live chat, uh, got to hand it to him for... Uh, you know, he was supplying updates to everybody. Fortunately, his power never went out. So uh, that was a, 
a double good thing there. And from what he said, I think the only thing uh, that he had damaged was one tree and some rips in a, uh, like a mesh uh, on something. Uh, it was like a bug net around a, a hot tub, I think. So it, it says, it, he says, it got scared and moved east of me. <laughs> so, well, I was also <coughs> glad to see that uh, uh, both, I, I don't know if you guys got any rain from the uh, uh, kind of remnants of Hurricane Irma, uh, Marty? Well, we did. Uh, ironically, of course, we're not in hurricane area, but we get all of our rain from the Gulf of Mexico. Hurricane Harvey, we got about five inches of rain. The county next to us where my wife had done her career teaching got eight inches from Harvey, which is a lot of rain. And so we've had a little bit from Irma as well, the last 24 to 36 hours. So both hurricanes hit us with rain. Oof. Well, aren't you glad this didn't happen when, when the eclipse was happening? <laughs> because I thought so often. It. I thought I'm so glad there wasn't a hurricane. I'm glad I didn't have pneumonia. But if I just had pneumonia, I believe I'd had them take me anyway. Yeah, Paul said that uh, there were pool screens, and he also says his sister got wiped down in Clearwater <laughs> Beach. We are really uh, sad to hear that. That's That's got to be bad, but uh, hopefully she'll be able to rebuild and, and get back to, to life here. Uh, we, we, you know, you've got our, our thoughts and prayers there for your, uh, for your sister, Paul. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's been a been a really bad year for a lot of people I know. So it's uh, not going well. Well, anyway, let's get to the event now. And uh, now, what you know, event is we, that? Oh, I, I think there was this uh, some sort yeah. of Apple thing today that went on. <laughs> Paul thought it uh, went on for a little too long. I don't know. For me, I, maybe it was because I was really paying attention uh, because I wanted to. Uh, you know, I have to write about it or something like that. But it's, this one seemed to go really fast compared to a lot of the uh, previous uh, sessions. And, you know, I got to admit, I, uh, I know a lot of people say, well, well, in fact, you made the comment. You said, well, I wasn't as wowed as I think I uh, have been at some other things. I think a lot of that might have been due to the fact that we had so many leaks that it almost took a little bit of the uh, surprise out of the, the message. So what do you think about that? I agree totally. And I was going to ask you, <clears throat> can you think of anything that was revealed today that had not been leaked, especially about the iPhone 10? I think the only thing that was a little bit different uh, was the fact that it's called the, whatever it was, A11 Bionic yeah, uh, chip right. instead of the A11. The, a lot of people thought it was going to be the A11 Fusion or something like that. And I think that's the only thing that uh, kind of slipped by people. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, <clears throat> I think that's why I wasn't as wild. I knew everything ahead of time, you know, as far as the specs, pretty much. Uh, but even there, it was kind of nice just to, you know, get that uh, verification or validation that, you know, what people were finding in that leaked... Uh, uh, firmware this last weekend actually uh, happened, you know, that we actually saw these things. And uh, let's kind of go through the event in in time order. Of course, it started off uh, just before it went on. It was uh, dear old uh, Beatles singing All You Need Is Love. Uh, I noticed there, there were a couple of song choices that were in there that are all, were all favorites of Steve Jobs. Uh, there was a uh, Bob Dylan song uh, that was playing uh, probably about 10 minutes before. I think I wrote it down here. Where is it? Uh, yeah, it was Subterranean Homesick Blues by Bob Dylan. And then something by Coldplay. And I mean, some of these groups had been on stage, uh, you know, Coldplay, for instance, uh, at some reveals in the past. Uh, Bob Dylan was just a favorite of his, and I know the Beatles were a favorite of Steve Jobs. But I I actually kind of got choked up a little bit. Uh, you know, they talked about the Steve Jobs Theater at Apple Park. They showed, you know, all these people going in there. Not us. But anyway, they showed a lot of people going in. 
but uh, he did kind of a, a nice uh, homage to uh, to Tim Cook, or excuse me, to Steve Jobs. And you could hear his voice kind of catching uh, Tim's. And uh, occasionally he was doing this kind of thing, you know. So I think it, it really hit him that, you know, uh, here they were really kind of carrying on, in fact, pushing on the legacy of Steve Jobs in terms of the, the iPhone 10th anniversary and uh, the first event in a uh, facility that you know, Steve Jobs dreamed of and never got to see. So uh, I thought that was really kind of a, a nice tribute that they paid. Well, it was a good tribute and I uh, did enjoy it. You know, and I thought they might, since he was there, just give a shout out to Steve Wozniak, you know, since he was there day one. But they never mentioned him. My wife had come in. Maybe he didn't want to be mentioned. Of course, I know they didn't <laughs> want to take away from Steve Jobs either, you know. But yeah, it's uh, definitely, definitely not the Steve Wozniak theater. <laughs> no. But one thing I noticed is they, you know, they kept showing, you'd kind of see him in the, uh, uh, you know, camera views of the crowd. And half the time he was whispering into the ear of that woman who was sitting with him. I don't know if that's his wife or, you know, some friend or, you know, what was going on there, but he kept whispering <laughs> into her ear, like he was making nasty comments. And he's been surprisingly uh, critical of Apple over the past, uh, well, past 10 years. I remember his, some of his early comments about the uh, first iPhone were, just ridiculous and uh his comments about the apple watch were horrible and you know uh i i'll say it again i've said it before uh wozniak ought to just shut up you know because he hasn't really contributed anything to that company or to society for that matter for quite a few years and you know <clears throat> i hate to see him coming out and being so negative about the company, you know, I'm sure somebody will ask him a question about the iPhone 10 or, you know, uh, Apple watch three, and he'll probably have some nasty comments to make about it. So Steve Wozniak, if you're watching, you know, that's all I have to say to you. <laughs> hey, that's Steve, not me, but, uh, <laughs> <coughs> but <coughs> pardon me. But uh, I thought they might just give a nod to him since he was there as sort of a coming full circle, but because he is still technically an employee. Yeah, he is. Still, still gets a check from him, <laughs> from what I hear. I don't know what he does, but yeah. Uh, but you know, the first uh, big announcement, Jeff Williams got out there, a director of operations for Apple, and uh, talked about the Apple Watch Series Three, and uh, strangely enough. You know, I, I still have an original iPhone or uh, Apple Watch. And strangely enough, I think this is something that I may finally upgrade uh, and get the LTE enabled version. Uh, how did you feel about the, the new Apple Watch? Well, I thought it was pretty amazing. I'm not sure it's something that I would get, but uh, the cellular is really nice. We're on a regional carrier, so we won't be able to do that. But... Uh, I thought it was a nice upgrade, but as you, as I as I've told you and our viewers in the past, I, I don't wear an Apple Watch that often. You know, I, I like one. I have one that a friend gave me, uh, the lady I've referred to on the show, but I don't wear it all the time. But when I do, I really like it, and uh, yeah. So you know, it may be something that uh, I consider uh, getting eventually, but I don't think I'll upgrade to that. I'll tell why later, but this could be an event where I spend no money on any product. Ooh. <laughs> okay, Apple stock is going to dive because of that. <laughs> but actually, you know, it's funny because, uh, like I said, I haven't upgraded. I mean, I've worn this every day since, uh, you know, the, I got it. And that was early, uh, very uh, soon after the uh, original Apple Watch came out. And, uh, you know... Uh, People have gone through the, the Series 1, Series 2 upgrades. Uh, I've heard a lot of good comments about the Series 2 in terms of battery life and speed and all this. And uh, I figured, you know, maybe it's about time finally. Uh, 
Uh, the dual core S3 processor in the thing is 70% faster than the, uh, apparently than the Apple Watch Series 2. Uh, they added a, a new wireless chip for faster Wi-Fi, uh, water resistance to 50 meters. You won't find me anywhere near 50 meters yeah. deep in water. Um, but the thing I thought was kind of cool was a barometric altimeter to re uh, measure relative elevation. Uh, so, I can see where a lot of exercise apps will probably uh, use that to get a, a more consistent and more precise reading of, you know, exactly how much height you're gaining and, and losing uh, during a, a, a particular hike or something like that. Uh, so, uh, you know, for me, uh, I've always found it to be a little bit annoying when I go out and, and I do uh, a walk to have to have my iPhone along because usually I'm wearing shorts or something like that. And I hate to say it, but it feels like, you know, I've got a weight in my pocket and it would be so nice to just be able to have the watch on, leave the phone at home, go out. And if somebody needs to get a hold of me, great. I can answer the phone call. Um, so for me, I think that's a, that's a definite, I'll be up, uh, uh 1 a.m. Mountain Time on Friday <laughs> to order it. <laughs> well, if I was going to get a new Apple Watch, it definitely the sailor would uh, push me over. Uh, that that is a big plus, and still all day or 18 hour they say battery life. And that yeah. uh, that off the script comment that Jeff Williams made about how good her microphone sounded, I think made a good point. Because he said he was going rogue there and make a comment, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I thought it was kind of interesting about the, um, they were talking about the iOS 10 heart rate app. And uh, then they kind of segued into this discussion about how uh, they're working with the F Food and Drug Administration on a study where they're going to uh, take that uh, heart rate information and try to give people warnings of uh, possible arrhythmias, including atrial fibrillation, which strangely enough, my dad was diagnosed with last week <laughs> out of nowhere. Suddenly he's got atrial fibrillation. Of course, I guess when you're 87 years old, going on 88, you know, just about anything's going to happen to you. But, uh, you know, I think for a lot of people that that's something that you never know until it's actually caught. Uh, a lot of times atrial fibrillations can happen uh, and you just think, well, my heart seems to be fluttering or doing something weird here. And it goes away. You never think about it again. Um, and that can happen for years. And then the next, you know, suddenly you get up in, in years and you have an atrial fibrillation and you have a stroke. So, you know, being able to have the phone or excuse me, the uh, watch, actually mm -hmm. watch your, your uh, heart rate and check for things like that and give you a warning to say, Hey, maybe you better go see your doctor about this. Uh, that's going to save a lot of lives, I think down the road. So big thumbs yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's going to be amazing what they're able to do monitoring different health things. Yeah. I can't help but think back to Star Trek where they just waved the little gadget over you, you know, <laughs> got all the data. Yeah, because think, you know, think about it. Eventually, they, they might be able to do things like, you know, there, there's a lot of talk about um, having uh, uh, blood sugar monitors for diabetics. And, uh, but if they could get it to take your, you know, your body temperature on a regular basis, uh, you know, maybe you suddenly you're not feeling quite right. And it comes up and says, wow, your temperature is up to 99.5. Maybe, you know, perhaps you should see a doctor. Uh you know, I, I've had a lot of times where I've just gone, you know, I don't feel quite right. I don't know what's going on. And uh, I just it kind of ignore it until I feel really bad. And then I've got a temperature of 101 degrees. So, you know, something like that would be fantastic, too. Um, I thought the price was interesting. Three hundred ninety nine dollars mm. for the GPS plus cellular. Uh, um, it was more affordable than I expected. it. Yeah, I, I, I went. Wow. <laughs> I kept thinking it was going to be like 500 bucks. So uh, they surprised me there. Yeah, definitely. And then the non-cellular version, 329, uh, which I, strangely enough, I kept thinking, well, that's a little high if the cellular version is 399. Shouldn't they make it like 299? 
Uh, they do have the Apple Watch Series 1 available for $249 as kind of an entry-level watch. Uh, and they brought up an interesting stat during this uh, the event as well, that the Apple Watch is no longer just the most popular smartwatch. It's the most popular watch in the world. So that's got to kill yeah. companies like Swatch and <clears throat> Timex and <laughs> the rest of them. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm seeing more and more while I was checking some things about this pneumonia, they were wanting to do some lung x-rays. The lady doing the x-ray, she had on an Apple Watch, so I commented about it. Oh, I was an answering a question from Paul Gans here. He says, uh, finally, a real Dick Tracy watch. Very cool. Will that work on Series 2 also? I think he's uh, asking about the um, heart rate monitor, and I believe so. I think it's uh, the heart, you know, whatever they call a heartbeat app, is supposed to be uh, working on pretty much uh, every uh, device made. So that's kind of a cool uh, item as well. He just sent me a message. <laughs> well, I better not answer that or um, I'll be rude to our, our viewers here. Um, how about the Apple TV 4K? What were you thinking about that? Because you do have a 4K TV, don't you? I do. And I uh, just got one about a month ago. Really like it. And been very interested in the Apple TV. That is the one product of them all that I would definitely buy. Uh, and, and I may end up getting it because I like the idea of just air playing right to the television and, you know, I'll subscribe some of the services anyway. So that, that may be a purchase. And once again, I really expected it to be a little bit more expensive than it was. Now, I just saw it on screen, didn't write it down. Wasn't the top model only one ninety nine? Yeah. Uh, 64 gigabytes of uh, memory or storage. Mm -hmm. Right, and then go down to 32, wasn't that much less. Yeah, 179. Yeah. Wow. So I thought that was quite affordable. Hey, and I, I meant, to, meant to bring it up to you. Guess what I got notification of yesterday? What's that? Google TV is now available in the oh, area. I should have known. <laughs> I'm not thinking clearly with this disease. You know, it's hard to focus a little bit. Really? Well, you need to give it a 30-day free trial. Or I think that's, it's two weeks. That, that's kind of what I'm thinking is, you know, just give it a try and, and see what we can find out there and then uh, perhaps go with it. But, you know, you start looking at, uh, for instance, we're Amazon Prime uh, members. Uh, 4K HDR content will be coming from Amazon Prime Video in the near future. Um, you know, I love the fact we've we've purchased uh, some of our favorite movies in HD format, and they announced today, hey, guess what? If you have any HD uh, content, we're going to automatically upgrade it to uh, 4K HDR versions when they become available. And I just went, my jaw dropped at that. It was like, yeah, that's like, you remember back in the days when, you know, you first got a DVD, you know, movie on a DVD and then they came out with Blu-ray and he had to buy it in a, in the, the new format. Well, we never did you know, because, well, we bought a couple in Blu-ray, but you know, to go in and take that complete library that we had of uh, DVDs and convert it over uh, uh, to Blu-ray was just cost prohibitive. And this is like somebody doing that saying, Oh, well, you've got HD. Yeah. We're going to give you uh much, much better quality, and it's free. Unbelievable. I thought that was the biggest part of that announcement. Yeah, I thought that was really a good thing to do and a good deal. And once you see the 4K, it's stunning, the difference between it and the standard high definition. I can so tell a big difference. I'm going to have to talk Barb into this. <laughs> yeah. And say, you know, we really need to get is – get a 4k TV and get, a, get one of these new Apple TVs and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> get her on board with it. Great idea there. Uh, so I thought, that, yeah, you know, that's something I would buy, but I don't have a 4k TV yet. Um, so I think, you know, it's one of those buy the TV first and then get this the next right. day. <laughs> will probably work. Well, and I like the gaming on it. That looked good. Yes. Yeah, the demo. 
Yeah. That one game, what was it called? Sky or something Sky. like that? Mm-hmm. Wow. You can that play it with really... up to eight people, you know, anywhere in the world. So Yeah. So we could all be going around. Uh, well, I like the the uh, thought behind it being uh, a carrier of light and fighting against the darkness. That right. Sounds yeah, I can like relate to that. Game. Yeah. Both of us can. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, and I thought it was too, uh, amazing also. Uh, they're using the same A10X Fusion that is used in the iPad Pro in this device. So, uh, man, you talk about a uh, high-powered device that's pretty incredible well it is such a small box and uh so it's available for purchase come friday so i'll let you know tuesday i think you can pre-order <laughs> i think yeah. on friday on that so well i i like the uh you know i i'm one of those sick people who if there's something that's announced that i decide that i really have to get uh i'm one of those people who's up at you know, locally, our time, it's one o'clock, it'd be two o'clock your time. Uh, but I'm up sitting in front of the computer <laughs> making the order. Or in this case, uh, I think I'm just going to uh, use the uh, Apple Store app and uh, go ahead and do it that way. But, yeah, I don't uh, think there'll be a run on it like there will be the iPhone, you know. I don't think yeah. they'll sell out in the first few hours or something. We can only hope. <laughs> yeah, I think the uh, iPhone 10, uh, that's October 27th, I think it is, that they're going to do pre-orders. That's going to probably be insane. Uh, but I think you're going to see a lot of people who like the form factor of the uh, iPhone 7 Plus and, or the 7 right now who may just say, I'm going with the uh, 8 or the 8 Plus. And in fact, if I remember correctly, yeah, Paul Gann said he's uh, going with a, uh, he's going to get the new Apple TV and an iPhone 8 Plus. So, you know, he's going to be one of those folks that's hopefully up and he's in the Eastern time zone. So it's going to be 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> He'll be sitting there, uh, you know, doing his pre-order. Well, we'll get to the iPhones, I know, in a bit. But the real thing I like about the 10 is the OLED display. And the other two don't have. You know, yeah. the o- OLEDs are so rich and vibrant. And uh, We'll get more to the iPhone details in a moment. Let's talk about the iPhone 8 right now in the 8 Plus. Right. Um, and, you know, it's funny because my first thought was, you know, back when, uh, over the weekend, when we started hearing that, oh, hey, wait, it's going to be the iPhone 8 instead of the 7S and iPhone 8 Plus instead of the 7S Plus, my thought was, why? And then I thought, well, maybe it's powerful enough that, and, you know, has enough of a jump in capability that they really felt that it deserved its own number, you know, like going from, you know, five to six or six to seven. And uh, after hearing about it, I think that's the way it is. Um, I, I like the fact that all the new phones are going with the, the uh, super strong glass front and back. I'm sure somebody is going to, you know, drop one onto a rock, a sharp rock, and it'll crack the first day. And then you're going to hear nothing but whining about how, you know, what a bad design choice they made. But it's going to happen. And that's why you have Apple Care. Uh, plus so <laughs> but uh i like the new gold color it's much less flashy looking i thought it was nice and subtle uh well that's what my wife said not so many words but when they showed the gold one she said i really like that color so yeah. she was really interested in the gold <clears throat> yeah and it's funny because gold has not been something that i've uh, really been all that interested in and i looked at it and i went Huh, I could buy one of those. I, am, I like the color. Um, but let's see, we've got True Tone, uh, like the iPad Pro. So uh, it's uh, the screen changes uh, tone to match ambient light lighting so you can get this real uh, paper-like look to it. Uh, it's got redesigned stereo speakers that are much louder, uh, which will be interesting during uh, conference calls. Uh, running the A11 Bionic six-core CPU with two performance cores that are 25% faster than the A10 Fusion, four high-efficiency cores that are 70% faster than those in the A10 Fusion, 
It also has, for the first time, an Apple-designed three-core graphics processing unit. Uh, so this thing is loaded, loaded for bear. And I think, you know, if somebody says, eh, I'm not really sure I want to wait for the, the iPhone 10, or I don't want to go with the extra cost of the iPhone 10, you're still getting one heck of an upgrade uh, with the iPhone 8 or 8 Plus. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Are the intros of the 8 Plus the same as the 10? Uh, yes. The, so what about the RAM? They both had 3 gig. Yeah, they both had 3 gig. I think the only real change is that the, uh, the A11 Bionic uh, that's used in the iPhone X is called the A11 Bionic Neural or something like that. And uh, it actually has a, a neural networking engine built into it to do all these, uh, I think they said 300 billion uh, calculations per second. I think it was doing, actually 600 billion. Now you might, might, might have been, <laughs> but I, I was stunned. Yeah. <clears throat> That's just course, crazy. I wasn't yeah. quite myself, so I may have just doubled it. I'm going to look here. I was going to see if I had anything on it. No, you're right. 600 billion operations per second. That's you know, insane. Yet, that's approaching a trillion operations a second. Yeah. That's amazing. We're getting uh, to supercomputers in our pockets. Yeah. <laughs> well, the uh, they're talking about 64 and 256 uh, gigs. Um price of the iPhone 8 starts at 699 8 Plus starts at 799 uh, that's most likely for the 64 gig version. Uh, but you know, the one thing that I think a lot of people might want to keep in mind when trying to figure out which one to get is that uh, with the new HEIF and HEV, HVEC, <laughs> HEVC, <laughs> I'm having problems uh, with these new uh, terms, but the new compression uh, right. algorithms, uh, chances are pretty good that you're going to be able to store, you know, close to twice as much in terms of video and photos on a device in the same memory. So uh, that 64 gigs might just be enough. Well, you know, I've got the 256. And even now, I think last time I looked yesterday or a couple of days ago, I had over 200 gig free. You know, wow. I just don't, don't use that much because I offload my photos. I don't know if you can hear Pippin, but he's talking about it, and he's saying 256 I do. gigs. What would you ever need 256 gigs for? Well, that's a good <laughs> question. You know, one of the reasons I like to overbuy on that, I don't usually fill it up hardly at all. I usually keep it at about 200, 205 gigs free. But if I go on an extended trip and a lot of video and pictures, I've got the space to really expand and not worry about it. Then when I get home, I can offload. By the way, uh, and this is kind of off the subject, but somebody did uh, thought they found on a Geekbench website, thought they found a Geekbench uh, reading for one of the, the new phones, <coughs> either the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 10. And uh, they said these things are now approaching the i5 MacBook Pros in terms of speed and capability. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> Um, let's, let's jump to the iPhone 10. I, oh, and well, the one thing I did want to bring up about the iPhone eight, you can pre-order once again, Friday, uh, starting Friday at midnight Pacific time. And, uh, you can get them on September 22nd. And like I've mentioned before, September 22nd is my 60th birthday. So if anybody wants to gift me with one of those and just have it show up at my door, I'd be <laughs> really, really, really happy with you. But, uh, I'm not expecting it. So time. you're going to be 60 before our next broadcast? Yes. I, uh, no, because our next broadcast is, what, right, the 19th? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. said 22nd. Yeah. Well, you got, got one more. There. <laughs> yeah, I've got one more as a young kid. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the <laughs> iPhone 10. Uh, we had all wondered if it was going to be iPhone X or iPhone 10. It is the Roman numeral 10. X, you know, so uh, all glass design. Uh, it uses instead of an aluminum uh, bezel around the outside, it uses uh, stainless steel. 
uh, 5.8 inch display. It's called the Super Retina display. And I was a little bit concerned that they didn't tell us what the uh, exact screen resolution was going to be. Um, but the fact, you know, you brought it up, it's an OLED panel. Uh, you're going to get really bright colors, true blacks. Uh, they said the contrast ratio is a million to one, and uh, the color management should be pretty incredible. Well, it, it is. My, I would consider. I would go with uh, the eight plus, if not for the OLED. That is the one thing that would really make me want to go with the ten instead. Because I've had some phones in the past with OLED, uh, you know, Samsungs. And the screens are absolutely stunning. The, uh, well, they say the uh, display uh, and the entire device uh, supports Dolby Vision and the HDR10 standards for high dynamic range video. So, you know, watching uh, any video content or viewing photos on this thing ought to be outstanding. Uh, once again, it's a true tone display. Uh, I've gotten, so I, I really like that on the iPad Pro, the 10.5 inch. Um, because you can really see a difference. You see, you know, I hold up my uh, iPhone 7 Plus compared to it. And if I happen to be in a, a room where there's incandescent lighting, the uh, iPad, you know, it looks like a piece of white paper when I'm looking at a, a website or something. If I look at that same website on my iPhone, it's got that bluish cast to it. And uh, it doesn't match up the ambient light. Right. So. Uh, it, it's yet again one of those things that you really don't kind of get until the first time you really see it side by side and you go, wow, that makes a difference. Um, so no home button well, for the first time. We, well, I want to mention or ask, excuse me, I don't think I heard them say this. I was a little surprised they're not going to have the ProMotion display. Is that what it's called in the iPad where it goes from, you know, like – Oh, 40 yeah. hertz to 120 hertz well, according to what you're doing. I really thought yeah. that would be part of the iPhone display this time. Good point. You know, I never thought about that, but that's a very good point. Yeah, uh, because like you said, the iPad Pro goes from 40 most of the time when it's just doing static display up to 120 during uh, games and uh, when it's actually picking up I, uh, Apple Pencil input. And uh, maybe they... You know, they got to keep something for next year. Or so yeah. maybe. <laughs> I wonder if there'll be an iPhone 9 or we're just going to go all the way to 11 and get back on. Let's go track. to 11. Yeah. But, uh, well, back to your point about the phone. So what, what other? No home button. Yeah. So uh, replacing Touch ID with Face ID. Um, I, I thought it was pretty incredible. They have one slide that they showed uh, where they talked about that you know, the little cutout at the top, the sensor zone or whatever the heck they call it. They actually had a name for it and I didn't hear it, uh, but it has an infrared camera, a flood, uh, infrared flood illuminator, a proximity sensor, ambient light sensor, speaker, microphone, front camera, and a dot projector all built into this little tiny piece up there. And so this true depth camera system that they use for face ID and for some other things, uh, it uses a dot projector to project more than 30,000 infrared dots onto your face. Then it has a flood illuminator that illuminates the entire uh, face. The infrared camera picks all this up. That all goes into this neural uh, processor part of the uh, uh, A11 bionic neural and it creates this mathematical model of your face that's stored in the secure enclave of the Apple system on a chip. Uh, so a lot happening in a very, very short amount of time. Um, and I love the fact that they said, you know, you, you can't fool it. Uh, for instance, you know, I am still attempting to grow a beard here. I don't know if you can see that wonderful facial hair there, but let's say I got thoroughly disgusted with this and I decided to shave all my facial hair off and I got contact lenses again, which I can't because my eyes are really weird. It would still recognize me, uh, you know, because it's looking at the underlying face. It doesn't care about 
these things. It doesn't care about facial hair. Right. And that's pretty impressive. It is. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you're talking about it's all in that notch. I guess the one negative, and I'd mentioned this to my wife, they had showed just a very quick clip of a full screen video. It fills the screen in those two little tabs or ears up there. And, it, and that part of the video is blacked out. You know, you do have a mm. notch out of your screen. And that, to me, just doesn't seem very Apple design-like. It seems a little, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's, it's not as smooth and balanced. But Yeah, you would, you would almost think that they would just, you know, take the bottom of that notch and kind of black out everything above and have the video image fill the, the bottom of that. But... I think I would like that better because that, to me, I wonder if it will be a little mentally distracting, you know, because I know yeah. of no other phone that has part of the screen cut out, you know, uh, yeah. at, at an odd shape. But my wife made a good point. If you're holding the phone, your thumb's over that area anyway where it's going to be usually, hmm. you know, your thumb's over that. So that's true, and that's a good point. And I know some of the apps did not go up in those two little tabs, but some yeah. of the video did. Yeah, I've got a funny feeling that we're going to see a lot of apps that are going to have to be rewritten and updated in the next well, month or so uh, to really fit that because, uh, you know, just now everybody's suddenly going, oh, hmm, well, we've got, you know, completely new, uh, whatever the heck you call it, notification area up here at the top of the screen. How do I, how do I work with this? So there's going to be some... Uh, faux pas along the way, I'm sure. But uh, the one thing I had to uh, think was kind of fun, they, were, they made a, a subtle slap at Samsung. And I don't know if you heard about, you know, Samsung's uh, face recognition technology. They rushed to market with it last year after they heard that Apple was working on something like this. And you can spoof it by holding up a picture. Um, I mean, you can fake it out almost immediately, which is worthless. Um, Apple, they said uh, you can't spoof it by holding a, a picture in front of the camera. Uh, it cannot be spoofed by a three-dimensional mask. Uh, apparently, I think that infrared camera also looks at the facial temperature. So uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, they said that Touch ID, you know, if you had 50,000 people all put their thumbs or finger on the uh, uh, Touch ID pad, uh, you'd have, I think it's one out of every 50,000 uh, times, somebody would be able to unlock your phone. Face ID, uh, they said it can be unlocked by identical twins. And they suggest you to, using a passcode if you have a uh, evil twin, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Uh, but they said uh, it has a one in one million uh, failure rate. So it's much more secure than even touch ID is. Yeah, I thought that was pretty impressive. I do wonder how it's going to be convenience, <laughs> pardon me, convenience-wise. Because with Touch ID, like if you're getting ready to pay with Apple Pay, you can have your thumb on the button as you pull it out of your pocket, then just wave it over, and that's it. Yeah. This isn't really an extra step, but you have to tap the side, look at it, then pay. But I'm sure it'll yeah. become a very quick, fluid motion. Yeah. Well, and, you know, one thing that they didn't mention today, but um, we, we keep getting emails from these, uh, like from the NF, uh, or NFC interest group, uh, they're bringing up the fact that uh, everything from the, I think it's from the iPhone, well, the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 uh, supposedly support the NFC standards. So, you know, perhaps, um, you know, it, won't need, you know, the, the phone won't need to be as close. Uh, perhaps you'll be able to, I, I don't know. You know, it's just going to be interesting to see how that works. Like you said, it's, you know, until <laughs> somebody has hands on and you're, you're actually trying to buy something, you <laughs> won't know what it's going right. to be like. Well, I'm sure it's going to be a nice fluid motion because yeah. if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, they did say that like to use Apple pay, you will have to tap a button on the side. Yeah. Yeah, so I think you. Watch. Yeah, you still do the boom, boom on the side or something like that. And, right. Well, with 
<coughs> touch ID, you don't. You just wave it over while holding your thumb there. And it seems like that would be smoother, but maybe not after I get used to the other. Yeah, you see, that's the funny thing is I always use my Apple Watch for, for uh, uh, Apple Pay. So I'm real used to that tap, tap, boing. <laughs> well, my wife uses her watch all the time now, and so many people, we're getting it more locally. She did somewhere the other day, and a lady asked the other, said, did she just pay with her watch? And so, uh, it's pretty amazing. It still surprises me how many people <clears throat> either have never seen it, or it's so rare that they see somebody pay with an Apple Watch that they, they just, you see their faces kind of do this, you know, whoa. Uh, well, <clears throat> it's like I get to pay at the vet on, uh, when is it, uh, Friday, I have to bring our quiet cat, the beautiful and very lovely Miss uh, Mary over here, I have to bring her over to have uh, a teeth cleaning on Friday. And I know that they take Apple Pay. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups here. <laughs> You're hiccuping. I'm coughing. And, so, <laughs> and Pimpin's <laughs> mewing. <laughs> um, um, but one of the things about we've learned getting off subject here on Apple Pay is just try it. If you see the uh, NFC contactless pay, even if it don't say Apple Pay, try it. We went into a local dollar type store, not a dollar store, but it's called Family Dollar. They had that logo, but no Apple Pay. Wave the phone over. It went through. Uh, so much was the lady impressed. She had to come around and see, so I had to buy something else so she could watch. <laughs> Plan, I got some M and M's. So. She probably does that just to, you know, bump up sales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the iPhone 10 cameras, uh, you know, once again, they've got a front-facing seven megapixel true depth camera. Uh, for the first time, you you can do uh, portrait mode selfies, which is kind of cool. Uh, the rear camera, dual 12 megapixel system, dual optical uh, image stabilization, and uh, a pretty fast telephoto uh, lens, f2.4, uh, actually faster than the one on the iPhone 8 Plus. Uh, but <coughs> one of the silly things that I think people are just absolutely going to love are Animoji. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I wonder if Craig... Federighi ever thought he would stand on stage and cluck like a chicken at a major <laughs> yeah. event, you know? Wasn't that great? Yeah. If they told him, say, two or three years ago, in the future, you will stand on this stage at an Apple keynote and cluck like a chicken. Like a chicken. <laughs> and he would have said, no, there's no way. But he did. Hey, with what he probably gets paid, you know, if somebody paid me that, I would stand on stage and Cluck like cluck a away, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was but, a it was a good demo. You know, it was live TV. He had a little trouble with his face recognition at first. Did you notice? Yes, the the first demo, and of course, I immediately saw somebody saying, "Well, you know, that's a fail. It's not working." Well, he picked up the the second phone, and every time he did it, it worked. You know, so I think it was just a a, a glitch. And you got to understand that this thing isn't coming out for another almost two months, uh, you know, it'll ship in November. So uh, they, they have time to work out a couple of little glitches there, which, you know, it would probably work today, mm -hmm. but. Um, and anyway, key char uh, uh, wireless charging. Yes, finally. I thought the, uh, one of the coolest things I saw there was that, uh, what they call air power, the pad that you could put your iPhone, mm -hmm. your, um, you know, Apple watch, you can take your, AirPods, uh, apparently they're going to sell you another charging case, uh, but you can put all three of those on the pad and charge them up simultaneously. And there's this wonderful animation on the phone that tells you uh, what's being charged and, uh, you know, what the level of charge is. Very cool. And that comes out. It is nice. I like that. So, um, yeah, talking about his little face ID failure. My wife and I are watching together. And incidentally, that is, this is the first Apple event she's always taught school. We've been able to watch first iPhone event together. So uh, and it was fun doing, but uh, he did that. And I think she said, uh-oh, or something when it failed. But then it quickly, you know, went through. 
And so I know she'd be interested in the wireless charging because she has an Apple Watch. And uh, I think she said a couple times, I really like those earbuds or, you know, so. Yeah. They, uh, of course, that's what you've got right now, right? And so. Yes, I do. You'll be Even able to charge. Even though I had to laugh uh, in our uh, Apple World Today deals shop, uh, there's a company that made a, shall I call it shameless ripoff of these things? Uh, like, I can't remember the price of like $39 or something like that. I'm sure quality wise, they're probably uh, not as good as uh, AirPods. But if you want to fool somebody, you go with these wonderful little cheap AirPods or uh, I can't remember what it was called. They had a name for it. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, what did you think about some of the uh, augmented reality demos that they had? Oh, that's what I was going to comment on. You know, I, I am a gamer. That game was stunning. I told Ruby, I said, you know, we're on the verge of just having holodecks. She said, we are. Yeah. Because, you know, that guy was in the scene for a while in the game with the sound of the phone, uh, the, the graphics. It was absolutely stunning. Yeah. It, uh, I thought it was pretty amazing, really. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's funny because uh, the last couple of days I noticed uh, Google is talking about their, they've got a something similar to AR kit that they're now trying to push developers on. But I think what people tend to forget is that with the, the Android ecosystem, uh, there's no standard hardware. So it's you're, what you're going to find is that their AR solution, whatever it may be, will run on just a certain very small subset of Android phones. Uh, whereas, you know, pretty much every iPhone 10 and beyond that comes out, or excuse me, uh, even the uh, iPhone 8 and uh, 8 Plus uh, also have the augmented reality capability. So anything iPhone 8 on, and maybe some earlier models, uh, to a certain extent, we'll be able to run these AR apps. Yeah, I think that's going to really be, I think this is a whole new category, you know, or yeah. area we're going into because I am interested in the gaming, but I can see so much like uh, getting house furnishings or things, see how it's going to look in your house or even trying on clothing. With that 3D camera, it can measure your body and try on clothes virtually. Uh, get your exact size. I think that's where we're going to, you know. Well, I remember seeing one too. Um, uh, actually, I guess a few developers have worked on them now where you actually take the phone and you point it towards something and knowing the distance to, the, to for instance, a wall and the angles that are uh, you know, <coughs> seen in the image right there, it can actually uh, act as like a, a virtual measuring tool and tell you, you know, within like tiny fractions of an inch, uh, what a distance is. So, you know, that suddenly starts looking like, oh, well, maybe I can take my phone, uh, do a 360 degree, uh, you know, panorama of the room, and it will go in and tell me the exact dimensions of the room, the square footage of the floor, uh, you know, <laughs> the volume yeah. of the room, whatever you want amazing stuff well it really is i think we're just well, we're truly at the tip of the iceberg of augmented reality yeah and uh, apple's definitely got the lead on it like i said i i just cannot see you know if you take a look at something like uh the virtual reality setups uh that are out there right now uh they're either kind of uh, i hate to use the term cheesy but uh some of them are uh you know, that's where augmented reality is really kind of an improvement. You're not trying to generate this entire image there. Instead, you're just doing that uh, overlay. <clears throat> and I think they were showing Star Walk. I couldn't, couldn't hear when they, they uh, talked about it, but I think it was the Star Walk app. Now it'll actually show the sky as you see it uh, with the stars overlaid on it. Uh, which is really, really cool because even, you know, you could go out, you know, in front of your house and you'll see like a, 
where your house is, and then you'll see the stars or the you know virtual star field right. around your house. That is neat. I love this stuff. And you saw Major League at bat pointed at yes. the field. You know what's so funny stats. about? Yeah, I was talking yeah. to Barb about that uh, when we were at a Rockies game earlier this year, and I said, you know, it'd be really cool is to be able to hold up your phone and have stats, you know, floating above the the players. They're doing. Yeah, yeah I know it's <laughs> unreal. So this is crazy. I love this stuff. You know, yep. I, I, well, I, I, you know, you and I and and Dennis, the the great thing is, and uh, you know, Paul Gans and a lot of our uh, regular fans and viewers, we're all a little bit older, more mature. I'll put it. And so I, I think we have reason to get really enthusiastic about this stuff, considering what we came from, <laughs> seeing the advances. Yeah, I think year. we appreciate it because, yeah, of knowing how basic it was. I still go back to dip switches and jumpers on pins, and, and now it's 300 so baud modems. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, Remember, I, I see how long the dial it took up now and connecting. Yeah, you know, between 300 and 1,200 baud, and then 1,200 and 2,400, 2,400 yeah. and 9,600. And then, you know, finally you had the 1,400, 28.8, 57.6 was about it. You know, that, I think that was my last modem. That was it, pretty much. But, you know, <clears throat> that seemed like it took forever to happen. <clears throat> so, you know, we're on the verge of uh, 5G, which will be gigabit speeds, pretty much anywhere there's a, you know, cellular data system. I love it. You know, and it, and it's bringing uh, these things, you know, everywhere. You don't have to be in the big city. Yeah. Uh, of course I do live, you know, in a rural area, but the other day I was out and I just did a speed test on the cellular. I think I got, it was 98 meg down on our LTE. That's pretty, pretty wow. good, you know. I'm um, moving to your neighborhood. It, it was 90 something. It was almost, it was almost a hundred. But they had wow. said they'd gone to advanced LTE. Uh, some of the towers near home, I only get about 40. But then sometimes near town, I'll get 90 or so plus. Wow. And uh, the thing is, uh, I'm getting that. We have unlimited data. It's, it's unreal, you know. Well, the crazy thing was so, uh, there still are parts of this country where you don't get good cell service. Uh, I had, well, actually, I think it was almost a good thing uh, when we were up in uh, Yellowstone National Park. Uh, cell service is very spotty. And uh, even where they did have cell service, uh, the big carrier, uh, for some strange reason, in the park was Verizon. And uh, so Verizon people were just like, hey, I'm doing this. I'm having a great time. And we were getting nothing. I was lucky if I could get text messages out. Uh, you know, so there are still parts of the, the planet that are a little on the... Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> still waiting for those satellites. We're, yeah. We're pretty lucky because even though it is rural, there's a major interstate very close. So they populate those. Yeah. I, uh, I was surprised uh, even in you know, some very, very uh, rural parts of, of Wyoming, you know, you'd be out in the middle of nowhere and Barb's sitting there on her phone with, you know, four bars LTE looking stuff up. And that's, that's pretty incredible. Well, it is. Well, what else about the new phone? Uh, they said about two more hours of battery life than the iPhone 7. Yeah. Was that, was that on across the board or was that just for the 10? I, I don't know. I, I know they brought it up about the 10, but I wouldn't see why it wouldn't happen for the eight, at least the eight plus, you know, with the larger, uh, body, but well, you know, that's one of those, right. we'll have to wait and see. Personally, I, in my idea is that I think they're, long-term plan is that the iPhone disappears and you have ear pods for sound, you have some sort of virtual or augmented reality glasses, and you have all your cellular connection through one of these. They may do and, it. 
they do that, I'm I'm a happy camper. As long as I can continue playing some of the games that I like to play, right. maybe I'll have to, you know, tap on virtual cards in my solitaire game with my finger. <laughs> Well, and uh, one other thing about the phone, and next week I think we'll have a good show because next week iOS 11 ships. Yes. So by the evening, we both, uh, we all should have been able to play with it. I have not loaded the beta on a phone because, I, you know, I just have the one phone. So. Well, actually, if I remember correctly, I think they're saying the 19th. So that's going to be, oh, that will be our show. Yeah. yeah. Good point. I, time's time's flying by too quickly. Yeah, I know it. And so what <laughs> that? Uh, how do you think? I know people will adjust, but it's going to be a little bit of adjustment getting used to no home button or swiping up, then to the side and control panel at the top on the new. Well, phone. the one thing I, I've noticed, uh, even on an old iPad Mini that's running uh, iOS ten, or excuse me, iOS eleven beta. Uh, I, you know, because I'm so stuck in the, you know, the previous way of getting to things, I, I'm still having some issues with some of the, the multitasking. I think once everything switched over to it, um, it'll make life a lot easier just <clears throat> being able to make that mental switch. But um, <laughs> I find, you know, I'll pick up that iPad mini and I start playing with it and I'm just like, wait, 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 no, that's wrong. No, wait, what gesture do I use? <laughs> well, Pretty crazy. If I, if I understand correctly, will it be the older gestures for the 8 and 8 plus, but only the new one? Uh, yeah. New gestures without the home button. Yeah. So for, yeah, I think getting in, Pippin is just going nuts here tonight. Anyway, for doing the, uh, uh, multitasking features, you know, oh, I've got to remember how the heck you do this here. Uh, da, 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 da. L let me look here real quick. Uh, yeah, it's the, well, it's still a swipe up from the bottom to get to the, the multitasking features. The thing that's interesting is that they did it differently on the uh, iPhone 10. It actually shows that you know, the three-dimensional view of all the open apps uh, to switch between. Whereas on the uh, older iPad, I don't know if I can pull this up because I don't even know we can see it here, but whoops. Uh, get get out of there. Oops, there we go. Yeah, if you see if, uh, the to switch to different apps, you've got the different panes that come up and you can kind of, swipe through them so that's a little bit different too uh you know I, once again it may just be that's the difference between how it works on an iphone and the way it works on an ipad uh i haven't loaded it on my iphone yet because i i uh, need to use it <laughs> well that's same here it is my work machine and i like to have what everybody else has whenever they say how do i do this i can look on my phone and show them so. Yeah. The one thing I've got to admit about iOS 11 that I, I really, really do like is that that dock, uh, at least on the iPad, it makes it, you know, kind of pushes it a little bit more towards OS, uh, uh, Mac OS. And uh, that I really like. I noticed that the dock does appear on the iPhone 10, but I'm not sure it showed up on the iPhone 8. So I can't see what the difference would be between right. the two in terms of UI, but maybe I just didn't notice it. Well, you know, to wrap up everything from today, I may get the Apple TV, but if I get a phone, I, it will be the iPhone 10 because, uh, you know, I just, I want that yeah. OLED screen. And, but I was talking to my wife. I, I actually told her, I said, you know, I may just skip upgrading this year. I think she said, really? I said, well, whenever our carrier, <laughs> whenever our carrier comes out with them, I know me. I'll have to go ahead and get it. So, uh, yeah, for me, um, the the real go to, like I said, after two and a half, almost three years of the uh, original uh, Apple Watch, I am definitely going to upgrade to uh, a Series Three. 
uh, for the phone, I, I have to admit, I was very, very happy that uh, you can't even do a pre-order until the end of October because I had these nightmares. Uh, my wife and I are planning on a, a little weekend trip uh, for my birthday. And that would be the day that the, the phone would be delivered. <laughs> and I kept thinking, oh my God, you know, it'll get delivered on Friday and I won't be able to pick it up. And then they'll try Saturday. And, you know, maybe I can pick it up Monday. And I was, I was getting all way too concerned. When they said October, I went, no problem. <laughs> and they said, what, availability November 3rd. Yeah. So that's perfect for me. I'm happy. Um, Apple TV, um, like I said, we just need to get a 4K TV first. And then uh, that's a no-brainer uh, down the road. So uh, I think it's going to be a very expensive fall for all of us. Yeah. I'm definitely leaning toward the Apple TV, so. Yeah, but, uh, and you, you're going to have to tell us how that works because I think that's going to be, with a 4K TV, uh, that is going to be so awesome. Well, I just like the continuity of uh, <coughs> synergy of everything working together, the iPhone sending its screen over. And, you know, I do have it set to where I can send things over. And even I, I have an Android phone I play with no carriers, just a no SIM in it. And I have a Chromecast actually built into the TV and it works pretty good, but sometimes things might be a little bit more sluggish. Whereas I've known no Apple is usually they, they do everything just right. There's no sluggishness whatsoever. There's usually no glips or hic glips or hiccups and things. You yeah, see, I'm still using a second generation Apple TV and occasionally that'll just drive me bonkers. Um, you know, it's usually when we want to watch a movie or something. And uh, I've actually found in in uh, many cases, it's much easier for us to just go out and we've got the Comcast Xfinity X1 thing. And you just say, you know, show me whatever the movie happens to be. It comes up and you rent it. And two seconds later, it's playing. Uh, you know, I, personally, right now, I think that's still Apple's uh, biggest competition uh you know is you know wh whatever you get from comcast because they're doing a pretty darn good job <laughs> well they you know talk about all new interface and everything so hopefully they've got that worked out yeah and it's a 4k interface 4k does look good uh, a lot of the ball games i get to see with youtube tv uh, they're in 4k and not only are the pictures so crisp and clear, but the text is like sharp computer text they put on the screen, the scores, and I was just stunned. Nice. And so, with my crappy eyes, that would be really nice. <laughs> it does have. Mine are getting weak as well. So, uh, Well, I think we've uh, kind of uh, popped this one out there. We'll have to put the, the video will be up, uh, of course, tomorrow morning. Uh, but I want to thank you for... Uh, I mean, basically for being a trooper here, <laughs> even with pneumonia doing the show, you didn't even cough that much. I mean, Pippi or, you know, Pippin was noisier than you were. <laughs> well, uh, I appreciate it. But it's no problem. I was not going to miss what is the biggest Apple day of the year. Yeah. Uh, with our it show. was a good one. I, I, it was good. I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I look forward to it every year. It's uh it's really a big event, and now we have a real drought because we won't have an event till spring or summer at best. So, well, Quite we will have uh, sometime in November or December. You will have the the That's iMac right. Pro coming out, and maybe they'll have a little event. You know what? I'd love to see them do is have an event where they, you know, officially introduce the iMac Pro, and they say, "Oh, and by the way, here's the new Mac Mini." <laughs> That's where I thought you were going. I totally forgot about the iMac Pro. So that, that there will be an event here at the end of the year for that. So they might or throw they in may a just Mac throw Mini. it into the store. They might they might yeah. surprise us. But yeah, never know. The, they're 
stranger things have happened. Well, we're going to uh, th want to thank everybody for watching. If you uh, like this show, uh, come back every week. You know, we find that we don't get a lot of live uh, visits, but we do get quite a few people who come in after the fact. Uh, you know, either way, we love it when you watch the show. Uh, be sure to like us. Be sure to also go in and subscribe to the Apple World Today YouTube channel because uh, we need to keep growing here. And uh, from me, I got to say a big thank you, Marty. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I enjoyed it. And hopefully I'll be better next week and back to my regular studio setup. <laughs> I love it. Thanks a bunch, everybody. We'll go to the exciting outro here. Everybody have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Whoops.